Ok. So let's proceed to our inspirational speaker this week. It is Pak Mate. So welcome, Pak Mate. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Yeah, uh, I'm doing good, Pak Mate. How are you? Uh, okay. I'm very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, sunny day uh, today, yeah, uh, in Bali, mainly in Uluwatu oh. right now. So it's a good weather in Bali. Yeah? So in the previous week, I see that Bali is having having a really bad weather. So many rains, and so we can proceed to our inspirational speaker today. So if you guys don't know, Pak Mati is one of our property partner. He is the owner of Pondo Utari. So. Maybe from the GES team and marketing team, especially in the case side, know the where the Pondo Utari is. Yeah. Okay. Let's enter, let me share the Pak Made journey from 1999 until 22. Pak Made study in STP Bali and then in 2000 until 2001, <coughs> Pak Mate got internship in Regent Hotel Singapore, and up until now he is uh, managing two villas, which is Villa Pemutih and Villa Safia. And from 2015 until now, Pak Mate owned his own villa that's called Pondok Utari. So, from Pamate, any other uh, word that you want to add on the, your inspirational journey? Um, not really much. I think uh, Pak had was already mentioning, but uh, my experience actually. So, um, my specialist now is uh, in the hospitality side, which is like um, uh, in Estepe, Bali, the hospitality. Uh, uh college in bali um mm -hmm. my specialist actually is in like um like you know like a bar uh waiters and everything like that but um since i'm studying in villa pomuti the owners of the villa is give me a chance to to uh learning a lot with uh, how to manage the villa how to manage the team how to manage the uh, operational guest relations and everything like that. So actually uh, quite lucky so, um, uh, to have the experience, which is like a study from, uh, from the fails, from the uh, uh, zero, actually like a, uh, not only uh, doing the bar or, 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 or weather or something like that, but mostly uh specific is to to operate the whole properties and everything like that so after that i get a recommendation from the the first owners to to, to work in villa safia and yeah now i'm i'm a part of the uh the team of uh Pondok Utari actually 
So I think that's all from me. So if any question uh, about me, things like that, just let us know. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Pak Mate. So, first question, yeah, Pak Mate. Yeah? Yes. Okay, the first question, Pak Mate. Having managed and own villa, what key differences do do you see between these roles, and how can insights from both enhance the kid experience? Um. Okay. Um. Actually. Um in the meaning of hospitality is we giving um a best way uh for the experience actually so the things that i got from my colleagues before when i'm studying uh in sdp uh when they have like a like a early start they will mentioning to us is okay welcome to the the school of pembantu Right, mm -hmm. school of pembantu. So they call it Bal in Indonesia probably Jongos, yeah. But after that, they will say, okay, in the professional way, professional way that means we we we're not saying is pembantu or Jongos is uh, bad, but they doesn't have the knowledge how to satisfy the guests and everything like that. They're just only working for the 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 the. the uh, the, the person who giving the, the jobs and everything like that but we are different so professional way we have the the management how to uh giving uh satisfies the guests and everything like that so from that that's the base of the hospitality actually so we're willing to help we're willing to to give a good experience for the guests that staying in the house or the villa or or restaurant or the bar and things like that so so that's the base actually so uh the other things that i know when you are raising up your career um when i'm working in a region hotel which is like a fortune change i saw one of my boss because at that time I'm, I'm working in a banquet the banquet my boss with the suits and everything like that they just carrying the, uh, the chair and I'm carrying to, okay this is the time that I, I need to help you because this is very 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 important it's urgent things like that because it's everything is rising so from that experience when you have that things happening so you have to be involved straight away because you want to satisfy the guests you want to satisfy the client and everything like that so you have to be in there with your team with your with your uh, uh, staff and everything like that so that's my 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 way actually to give you some inspiration my 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 experience actually is not inspiration i don't want to be like saying that's my inspiration but is is that my my experience actually so from that that's the way of the hospitality so giving a best way to give them satisfied so i think if i can yes yeah yes, hey please continue yeah yeah i think i think that's all i think i think is hopefully that's uh from your questioning your question is uh i'm answering uh, uh what you quest uh your request your question actually okay so if i can uh summary summarize your uh speak is if to give the best uh what is it experience to the guest to the other person we should involve it ourselves to help them to give them best experience from our perspective and from our experience right yes correct in the uh in the certain way yeah like you don't have to be like always uh, help them the teams and everything like that uh, for the guest relation you should you should meet them uh, greet them and everything like that yeah that's correct okay uh, thank you Pak for answering the first question so we can proceed to the next question 
Are there any mentor or people in hospitality industry who influence you? And what important lessons have you learned from them? Okay, I think the first uh, the first question, some of them is already uh, answer your question, which is like first mm -hmm. person that uh, become a mentor is my manager last time in the regional hotel. Is uh, I'm not quite remember. It's quite long time. He's the first mentor that uh, become my inspiration. That's the first mm -hmm. uh, person. And secondly, is the uh, actually the uh, owners of Villa Pemuti. Uh, both of them give me inspiration to be a uh, 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 first is giving a chance for me to do. Uh, uh, something which is like uh, starting from the fail and then studying to, from the, the fail I can be a success and everything like that and and then also they are quite humble they quite um, uh, what they call is uh, in English uh, they call uh, very passion for me uh, for uh, they're very patient with me because of the uh, uh from that learning you you need time you know something like that so uh, so they they are my mentor actually and then uh in hospitality yeah when you when you're facing with the gas <clears throat> and everything like that you have to be patient you need to be um know the uh the needs uh and then um uh yeah um i think i i don't know to say but that's that two person is give me a, a a good 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 inspiration actually i think okay so and then you apply those experience that you got from your mentor into your own villa right Amati to manage yeah. your villa to keep the best experience. So, can you give an example uh, from this experience what you applied to your own villa, Amati? Okay. Um, from you don't know, become you know, is, um, uh, which is like, for example, um, okay, how to manage the garden, how to manage the pool, which is like from the college I've done have that experience so um because your responsibility how to responsibility with your villa and everything like that and get the owners giving a chance for me to 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 learning then i will i will do it so so now i got i got experience how to manage the uh, pool how to manage the garden how to manage the uh, waste management uh, i got uh, experience how to manage the team um and then a little bit accounting because management you always learning the whole things like not only in a, not in like a bar or a waiter but you're also doing the uh, how to do the making bed for the housekeeping how to do the uh, kitchen not all but actually you got you got everything when you're studying in medicine so that's simple uh that i got like maintains the, the mm -hmm. house also like 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 for example is you have to be working with the worker yeah. how to build the house how to to maintain the uh, maintaining the wood etc so we're learning together actually so 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 that's that's the uh the chance that i'm i'm quite lucky i got that one. so so i think that's all uh, that's that's my one that's one of the sample that i can can do. I can. I can. I, I got it from 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 my experience. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pamati. So you have become the mentor from your junior as well. Yeah, for now, You're sharing the knowledge that you got and hope they become uh, the new Pamati as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As a yeah yeah. Okay. Let's proceed to the third question. Is the last question, Pamati? and the question is how do you build and keep a strong team for your villa and what qualities do you look for in staff 
to make them good fit with your goals and way of working okay um this is the um sometimes it's quite hard you know when you are um working with the teams and everything like that uh you need um the first thing when i'm working in the villa i'm always thinking about they are my family you know they are my family so um in terms of professional way when you're working in a, in a, a villa or hotel they quite straight a little bit with 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 um the way you have to working you have a standard and everything like that they, they have to do like that but do you know in villa villa pamuti and villa safia um i don't know maybe maybe kind of crazy that thing uh uh when you hear this one i'm always not seeing them in background uh the background that they have for example uh they 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 they, they where they uh the schools etc etc et so i'm always giving a chance to them to learning you know like for example uh if you're working in the villa and hotel they're always asking okay you are past the college of what for example high school or stp bali or whatever things like that i'm not i'm i'm a little bit crazy which is like i'm saying to them okay i'm not really seeing them now because uh in like a villa or whatever you can study on it you can study like housekeeping how to making the bed uh, the gardening uh kitchen and everything like that. you can you can learn it uh uh that thing is quite easy you know like okay for example one years now in the college if you want to study um uh, in hospitality is like a make uh like in a housekeeping you can do like six months or one year something like that so from that side um maybe they will i want to build the uh, uh what they call is the um uh loyalty to the team the loyalty for the uh for for the place that works and etc etc and then um we're working together i'm always saying to them okay if you have any problem with you with your learning that we will teach them and then uh, when they pass this uh the learning then they have to do it um and then sometimes you have to listening uh uh you need to go around a little bit sometime you know like when they're working very hard uh, uh last time they're working very hard suddenly they're not working very hard too much thinking every time as a dresser i'm always questioning okay what's the matter what happening think like that. okay maybe they have a problem at home so not all i will i will i will uh hear from them but uh i will try my best okay this is the solution we can do something etc etc so uh that's why i got i got the team which is like the um yeah sometimes they come and go come and go and come and go so we cannot do it so we cannot hold them you know but that's the way um uh, I'm, I'm make my team is solid uh harness that's the main thing is a harness when 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 we have working in the villa things like that the harness had working and giving them a chance to learning if you want to become okay next time you become manager you become a, a, a hotel owners or maybe a, like a pono utari like a property something like, i'm always give give them uh, that 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 way that's something like that so that's my 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 perspective about how to keep uh, a strong team uh, for the villa and that I manage now that when I, uh, that place I'm working and the other thing is the property that I have for Pondokutari. Yep. Okay, that's, that's quite uh, interesting uh, answer Pak Mati. So giving the staff to learn and you know like treat them like a family. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's cool, Pak Made. So thank you for attending our all hands meeting and become our inspirational speaker. That's our last question. And okay. and for Pak Made, if you have any other agenda, you're welcome to leave this meeting or however, if you like to stay and observe our all hands meeting you are more welcome to do so okay okay thank you very much for listening and then thank you very much for everyone and hopefully there can be something that uh, from my experience that you can uh, uh, absorb and then um, yeah hopefully everyone will have a, a good chance so i believe that uh, everyone will have a good chance yeah okay thank you very much i will be here maybe in five minutes uh if i want is that okay if i i'm leaving or absolutely something like that? absolutely please stay for my day we have some great stories up ahead <laughs> okay okay Paji. yeah i don't i don't know your 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 your, your long name is jing ho yang something like that is that is that correct <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So Chinese name. So three three parts. Yeah. Yang Jing Zhuo. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Uh, please, everybody, thank Pat Made for coming in today. He's been one of our very very faithful and loyal partners. Uh, he's been a regular attendee at our roundtable talks. And Pat Made, I have hopefully a source of inspiration from uh, history to to share with you today. Uh, Balinese uh, uh, hotel history. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go through the basics as we normally do with where the company is and how we're doing, and then I'd like to share a little bit of a story about a incredible brand that um, I have some experience with. Okay, all right, uh, everyone ready? Yes, let's go ahead and begin. Okay. All right. Hey, does anybody recognize this guy? Anybody recognize this guy over here on the on the right? Anybody know who he is? No. Yes. This guy over here. Okay, Vidi probably knows. Yeah. Yeah, 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 buddy. It's Brian Chesky. Yeah. So uh, that's Brian, who's the CEO of Airbnb. And this was from my time when uh, I used to work at Airbnb. And this is Ren. Ren was Brian's personal coach. Uh, pretty interesting character there. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. Good news, bad news. Let's start with uh, it's mostly good. So, hospitality performance, it was short. So we're up at 81.9% now, which is incredible. Last week we were down at 70%. So this is back to above our target. So congratulations, everybody. Thank you very much for making this possible. If you don't feel proud, don't say anything. But if you love this news, then show a little bit of excitement and engagement. Yeah. And that way I know that you love it. Yes. Thank you, Wayda. Thank you for being the first to show some love. All right. Thank you, Nadia. Very cautious clap. Very cautious, yes. Not too much energy, not too much of a commitment. Like, ah, just like this, like this. Okay. All right. All right. Even Obama's smiling. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, collectively, we create a hospitality situation. So it's not one person, it's the team. Last all hands, we were talking about the monthly goals. We're slightly on track. Semester goals slightly off track. Hospitality is falling. New AM is rising and growing. Well, here's the bad news. So the revenue goals are stalling right now. We are not quite there. And one of the main reasons is that new revenue isn't coming in as quickly as it should. Hospitality is rising. Now, we have a plan to encourage, let's say, all of you to participate in how we get new revenue. So hopefully this will be uh, good news. So keeping the focus, right? So what is the focus once again on what we need to do? It's these three things, sales supervision and queue supervision, the size of an empathetic hospitality policy and exploratory data analysis. But would everyone like to know what we can do in more detail on these three ideas? Nobody wants to know. Okay, then I won't say anything. Okay, all right. This is what we can do. There's a canvassing bounty that is uh, going to be announced right now okay so for whoever brings in a new property we're offering a very limited time award for people who are bringing in high value properties okay likable ai community management seems to be the best way to actually improve um, our overall hospitality 
and a, of course, exploratory data analysis. And hopefully some of the new interns coming in can help us with that. So we need to look into our workflows, look for opportunities to improve performance on revenue for some of the newly onboarded and traditional properties that we've had, okay? So let me announce it right now. Here's some good news. Uh, revenue management and marketing are back up to full strength, and we actually have some of our uh, seventh generation MSAB interns. Uh, welcome, if you're here on trials today. Working at Book of Vista will probably suck for a few days, and then eventually maybe it will be awesome. But uh, this is a culture unlike any other place in the world. Rifki's smiling because he remembers, yeah, um, on the ups and downs here. So uh, no other company in the world is like Book of Vista. You either will love it or you'll hate it, but it will definitely be something you won't forget. Anyways, uh, we have teams back up to full strength again, which is uh, which is pretty good. Now, here's the bounty. So I promised there'd be some good news, and this is probably the best news I can offer, okay? So we are offering a bounty. If you can help us find a 5,000 or above monthly rental value property in the next few weeks, okay? Next two weeks before the semester uh, goal is finished. So we're paying 250,000 for each particular lead, just for bringing in a lead of these qualities. That just means you need to know the owner's contact, okay? And 25% share of income from the first three months Book of Vista income, okay? So that means you will be paid at least $750 for each property that you bring in that meets these specifications. Now, hopefully that's a little bit more than what you regularly make on a month-to-month -month basis. Maybe it's not, but okay. Anyways, should be a good motivator for everybody here. Marcel's smiling, right? Yeah, okay, all right. So let it be known that this is essentially the bounty that we're offering at this moment for whomever can bring us particular properties that have these qualities. And that will be the most significant contribution for our uh, semester goal, okay? All right, next, uh, this is the, of course, the mission is to inspire delight through hospitality innovations and positively transform our guest partners and employees. And that is what we aim to do. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is this. So for those of you who are uh, new here, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about this particular brand. This brand is Amon. Padmati probably knows about this brand. It mm. uh, has a long history here in Bali. It's had a very, very interesting history. And one of the things that uh, I, I just realized the other day as I was uh, driving around the Bukit with my wife is that we inherited a lot of culture from Aman. Okay. So for those of you that don't know this particular brand, I'll share a secret with you. If you're a billionaire, you'll know this brand. It seems to be some sort of uh, non-advertised agreement amongst all billionaires that this is where they spend their holidays. Would you guys like to kind of take a look at what this brand looks like? Yeah? All right, let's share. So Amman is actually a network of hotels all across the world. So they have locations in almost every major country. They have Amman's in Vietnam, they have Amman's in the United States, they have Amman's in Europe, they have uh, five here in Bali. There's three, no, they have five in Indonesia, of which yeah. three are in Bali. There's yeah. uh, three Amans in Bali, one Amman in Jogja, and one in Sumbawa over on the east side. This is probably one of their most uh, amazing hotels. This is Amman Kila in East Bali, where my wife is from. So this particular hotel has won numerous rewards, and it looks absolutely amazing. And uh, they have a really astounding uh, design. Mm. And it looks like this. Wow. This design is meant to capture wow. the rice paddies of Bali. So this is a terraced pool that overlooks the, uh, I think it's the Lombok Strait, actually. Long story short, this company was originated by a gentleman by the name of Adrian, Adrian Zeka. Adrian's almost 90 years old now. He's, uh, in fact, 91. He was born in Sukabumi. I don't even know where Sukabumi is. Does anybody know where Sukabumi is? Yeah? It's in Java. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Adrian actually comes from a pretty um, interesting background. He was back in, I think, back in the day, he was in uh, publishing. He apparently brought Playboy magazine to Indonesia. That was one of his achievements. But uh, after his work, yeah, it's a different thing. Imagine try doing that today. Yeah. So um, back in the day, this was his business. He decided that he would actually go and uh, this is where it begins. It begins here in Bali. You guys want to know the story? Yeah, fun story, okay? All right, so it begins here. 
it doesn't begin in the bouquet. It doesn't begin in Dempasar. It doesn't begin in, in Kuta. It actually begins right here in Sonor. Right here in Sonor, there you, this hotel, okay? This hotel was one of the first major hotels built in Bali before Nusa Dua, before anything. This was built, I think, in the kind of the 40s, 60s, 50s, 60s, okay? This is, uh, it's called the Inna Hotel now, uh, but I think it was called the original Bali Beach Hotel. So anyways, this hotel was being built as uh, Bali's first tourism object, Indonesia's first tourism object, and it was ugly. It was terrible. And it was the last hotel being built this way. It was a 10-story hotel built on a Miami concept from the United States. And it was done to be like the first object of tourism here. Apparently, all the local communities objected to this building because it was just too tall. It was too modern. It didn't respect Balinese um, principles at all. So there were protests outside this hotel a lot. Anyways, the really interesting story was this, actually, and this is a multi-part story, and I'll tell the story over multiple episodes because this is the history of hospitality in Bali. So what happened was actually this. The employees who were actually setting up this hotel, the general manager and such, they were actually drawn by another uh, Tanjung, sorry, let me see if I can find it, Tanjung, yeah, here it is, okay? They didn't live there. They lived over here in this little cluster of uh, bungalows over here. So this was the complete opposite. The employees, the senior employees at that hotel decided that they would actually rent their homes at Tangjung Sari. Tangjung Sari was the complete opposite, and it looks like this. Tangjung Sari was based on a model of recreating a Balinese village, but with kind of modern sort of hotel aesthetics. So they kept the Wantilans, they kept the Bali uh, uh, Banjars, they kept all these particular qualities. And they added swimming pools, they added Western design, but they really respected the way that actual Balinese architecture was being done natively. So this was really good. And this became a secret place for all the important VIPs in Bali to hang out. So basically, if uh, you were coming to Bali back in, let's say, the early 40s, 50s and such, and you were coming from France, England, whatever, you'd hang out at the Tangjung Sari. In fact, this was the only place you could make a phone call. Kind of bizarre, right? It's like you can make a phone call anywhere. But back in the day, to make a phone call, you would need an international line, and only large hotels would have an international line. But this is where everyone hung out. This is where Adrian first actually started uh, identifying this idea of circulating Indonesian culture across the world. So Adrian saw that unlike what anybody from Jakarta or from central planning thought about, right? People really didn't want to stay in these big Miami style hotels in Bali. The really wealthy people, the really important people preferred to stay in these type of hotels that were much more local, much more respectful. And this is where the community started gathering. So Adrian then eventually saw that this was essentially a really, really good idea, and he expanded it. And that's kind of like in a short story how the Amman brand was created. So the takeaway is this. The takeaway is, once again, sometimes the answer is right in front of you. Sometimes the authenticity of what you're doing naturally, what you're doing every day, is exactly what people want to see. And sometimes the things that we think are prestigious, are amazing, or whatever, are actually not what people really, really want. And so most of you probably have never heard of this hotel because the hotel essentially failed. It didn't really get any traction. It was come to this ugly thing in Sonora. Not a lot of good sentiment happened to it. And the hotel that actually, and the brand that emerged out of taking simple Balinese practices, native architecture, and expanding upon that became a worldwide hit. Okay. Hopefully that inspires everybody here to think a little bit more about essentially what makes your culture unique, what makes your own background unique, and celebrate those things. It's just a matter of do you actually recognize what is good about your own practices, your own culture, and making sure that maybe the rest of the world should actually recognize that too. All right, simple story. Anyway, let's get back to the main point again. Um, I'll share more stories about Amman. As uh, the weeks go by, there's a thousand and one good stories about this particular brand. They've established themselves over 30 years here in Indonesia and across the world. And uh, 
yeah, anyway, it's uh, it's something that we can draw a lot of inspiration from. All right, let's go back to the all hands. Cool? Yeah? Good to know, right? Well, next time, if you ever come to Sonora and you want to see the beginning of the Indonesian sort of hotel industry, pay a visit to Tanjung Sari. Occasionally, you'll still see some old expats hanging out there, I guess, but uh, I guess they're hoping to relive the good old days of back when... Uh, you know, sort of uh, the, that used to be the center of the Balinese tourism world, okay? But very historic hotel, very historic um, milestone in sort of the progression. And very small, by the way, not that big. Uh, very, very human-sized hotel. Okay, let's get back to the vision and mission of Bugat Vista, and we'll continue. So, uh, all right. Oh, yeah, this is me. So this is me when I used to have hair. See, I used to not always be so bald, right? Um, well, I had a little bit of hair, not too much. And this was my project management team. So I got to work with these uh, fine people for over three years to build this hotel, uh, which is the only part of Amman Nusa left over these days. All right. So here's the wrong strategic thinking, everyone. Not listening at all hands. And I've pledged to help with that by trying to make the all hands less boring. Okay. So please uh, do pay attention when we talk about things here. They are center and uh, important to everyone. All right, we talked about strategy already, so I'll skip over these parts. And uh, for the most part, I think um, we have actually gotten better strategically. But this morning, in our morning strategic discussion, we realized that we also need supervisory help, okay? So senior leaders who participate in strategic discussions cannot do it alone. They need the help of their managers and supervisors to make sure that things are happening correctly while they're in the strategic meeting. So I'm urging if you have a supervisory position in this company, if you have a supervisory responsibility, your job is to look after other people, okay? Please do your job well, because if we don't execute well, if we don't make sure that our teams, which are growing in size right now, are executing well, then no matter what our strategy is, it just doesn't actually happen. So there's no point in talking about that, All right? We do need more supervisors and more supervisory leadership. Now, developing upper management expectations from newly employed, employed, newly promoted employees is part of that. Some of you have been recently promoted to supervise other people. We are encouraging and also expecting that your work will be more on leading people. Liability moving from the core to the edge has been resolved. I think this has been taken care of, so we can strike this out and uh, not worry so much about it. I think this one's getting better. And the next one is improving likability of our AI personas. These are Kind of critical. All right, so my strategic commitment is the same. I expect everyone to do their job according to what is being fed back to you in your employee journals and what your title and your shift arrangement implies. I have committed to train and develop better strategists and upper managers and leadership positions. I'll be also hypervising and checking to see that their work is actually making progress in everybody's lives here today. And I want everyone to have a fair chance of getting a uh, semester bonus, okay? So, more on the core value. This month, especially if you're new here, looking at the new people here in the room, right? Stepping on toes is one of our core values. And I expect anybody who finds out that uh, they do have a good idea to put forward and really double down and emphasize it. It's super important that we don't get caught into groupthink. It's super important that we share great ideas and may the best idea win, no matter where it's from. All right. So the semester goal is a revenue goal of 3 million, overall rating 4.8, five star percentage of 80%. Essentially, we are paying a 5X individual bonus if the company achieves that sales target from April 1st to September 30th, of which we have uh, less than a month and a half right now. It's measured on October 5th, and the revenue goal and two hospitality goals results in a 5X bonus being paid. Um, if we reach one revenue goal and one hospitality goal, we pay a 3X bonus. And if the revenue goal is not reached, there is no semester bonus. Okay, bonus will be calculated, weighted on average or monthly individual bonuses. Caps and boosts will apply to under and over achievement months and carry weight on the semester bonus. Interns are also available for bonuses. If we reach the three goals, they get three million. Uh, all right, sorry. Uh, if they reach three goals, uh, we pay five million. If two goals, two million. If the revenue goals are not reached, then of course there's no bonus for anybody, including interns as well. That's it. Okay, let me pass it on to. Oh yeah, the bounty again. I want to just remind everybody about the bounty because the bounty is so important, right? Once again, the bounty for the next two weeks before September. Yes, bounty, Marcel. You can taste the money already. All right, two hundred fifty thousand for every lead. 
for a short span and above 5,000 monthly revenue, short span meaning that the property is ready to go in the next, uh, before the actual semester goals are, are, are reached, okay? Before September 30th. And 25% from the first three months income, or at least 750 per property. Maybe Pat Made would like to collect a bounty, yeah, as well. And hopefully he's here to also listen to that. All right, that's pretty much it for me. Let me hand it over back to Hits or whom is gonna continue on the next part. Uh, it's me, Ivan. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jing, uh, for your uh, vision uh, in this all hands. Uh, Mas Afis, uh, may you share the all hands document, please? Okay. So we will start with uh, the hospitality and revenue target, I guess. Uh, maybe Kyla would like to elaborate. Please. And thank you, Rifki. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, quick questions before we do any review performance. Anyone would like to guess <laughs> what property is this? Yeah. Um, the key thing. That's where they're yes. <laughs> Because we're the real is the listing today. Yeah, so. Uh, this is Rumah Taman Kuto. This is uh, an old partner who afforded our under relationship with us back in 2023 or I kind of forgot. But yeah, uh, they reached back to us and after several evaluations, we decided to welcome back. So everyone, even though we don't have the Rumah Taman Kuto personally here, welcome to Rumah Taman Kuto basically. All right, um, let's move on to the hospitality target achievement then. Thank you, Ms. Office. Okay, uh, disclaimer. So what Mr. Jim presented before was the yearly performance. Well, what I'm going to present is basically the semester. So it will be a slight different from his presentation. So do not get confused between that. All right, the first ones are related to the hospitality. Okay, uh, so first one uh, for the check-in, one second. All right, um, for check-in, I think this is just a heads up. Every every matrix actually um, fell down for this week, every single one of them. So I already brought this up to Sarah to as our request experience manager to basically give her hypothesis on what's not working. But here's the current status. The first one, I'll check in. Uh, minus 0.3% from last week. Next, we have cleanliness, minus 0.4% from last week also. At the moment, it's still on 80, but not quite there. Um, the next one is communications, minus 0.8. So this is quite huge on the communications. We are at 84.3%. Next, on the location, Minus 0.6, also huge gap from last week, we are at 72. The next one would be the value. On the value, um, we fell from 80, we are about 79.4%. This is 0.7 decrease from last week. Last but not least, we have the accuracy. Okay, the accuracy, um, still holding on to 84, but bit decrease from last week we are at 84.1 percent we need to get back to 85. okay um last one we have the overall quality at the moment we are at 81.3 percent and 4.72 we need to take note that actually even though the five star ratings look safe we have a decrease of 0.7 percent sorry because last week was 81.7 percent Right. Um, I'll be waiting for the analysis, and hopefully by next week we will be able to call uh, what has been not working, and if there's any performance or any improvement, basically, what would they be? We basically will drill down that. All right. Um, moving on to the revenue target achievements. So far, we have been able to achieve. 2,393,555 US dollar from the target of 3 million. 
we have about 20% left or around 606. For the time left, it's about 48 days. Bella, agree by you. Let's um, drill down on what's working. I don't think we are on track yet. So yeah, we are off track for a couple of weeks now. Okay, um, I think that's all for the presentations. Just know that it's not looking so good on the weekly basis and also the semester one. For everyone, I'd like us to basically, um, not changing plans, but trying to refine and actually trying to understand what is working and what is not. And let's not leave when we should stay or better yet, let's not stay when we should leave. Okay, that's it. Thank you everyone, have a good day. Thank you, um, Rifki. Thank you, Kak Kaila, for elaborating the hospitality and revenue target uh, for default hands. Uh, let's uh, jump to the weekly mission inspiration. Uh, okay, we have this uh, innovation to positively transform our employees from uh, Kashelin. Kashelin, uh, please uh, tell your point there. Okay, thank you, Rifki. So this is actually from the NGU Peak uh, 2024 program. So we had the uh, NG students uh, as well as with few uh, students from UI as well as UNER joining for the uh, program where they basically like present proposals on the problem statements from uh, BV as part of their project. So uh, they did the presentations uh, last week and it was actually much, much better than the last year's program. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Jing and Rehan can uh, testify with that as well. And yeah, it's it's actually like a, a, like a great opportunity, a great program that we can actually like collaborate with the NTUs as well as the uh, like students uh, this time around. So yeah, let's hope uh, maybe next year we can join again and it's going to be like much, much greater than this year's. Thank you and back to Rifki. Oh, great, great. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, technical innovation there from Wendy. Wendy, please uh, tell us your inspirational mission. Uh, okay, so the innovation is optimization for best and for handler scenario on Mac.com or Instagram. So we have successfully reduced the average number of operation per run in the best and for handler scenario from 30 to uh, 19. It means it's decreasing by 11 operation. Uh, this, optimization, this optimization is expected to lower the overall operational costs and minimize the risk of exceeding our monthly operation limit on integral mat, saving us about 40 to 60 per month. Nice, Wendy. Uh, okay, thank you for the innovation, Wendy. Uh, let's jump to the company theme, uh, Masatis. Okay, uh, I'm not sure uh, who will elaborate this uh, this page uh, uh is it Kyla actually Rifki okay I think Rifki is Rifki is somewhat gone so yeah I'll give the time to Kyla then <laughs> okay thank you everyone uh, okay, moving on to the monthly target, basically, for the company team target and achievements for the August one. Bill, kindly, thank you, Bill. Okay, um, for the revenue target of 572,000, we have been able to achieve around 80% of them. Uh, the achievement is about 462,494. For the five star percentage of the OK target of 84%, we have been able to achieve only 79% at the moment. For the overall rating for the target of 4.78, we've been able to achieve 4.67. So still not achieving on all target yet. Okay, so what are opportunities for August? Um, in August, we managed to have 50% occupancy, 5% expired dates, 1% maintenance, and 4% owner usage so far. There is an increase in owner usage Della can take notes on that. And uh, we have around 38 nights 
the 38 percent nights available to sell to achieve the okay target um we are still 13 days basically into august let's basically i believe we can try to achieve that so yep let's ensure that we've been able to achieve the monthly and most importantly try to support the semester goals as much as possible okay especially regarding the bounty thank you everyone yes marcel the slide has not been updated for the last three months okay let's update that for the next few months. thank you okay thank you Varela, and sorry for the interruption there uh let's see if there is any promotion uh for new employee mas Hafiz. okay uh there will be no promotion and employee let's jump to the corporal recognition okay the first one is uh from the bottom right it is from kayla nominate uh bella marcel della etc please uh kayla collaborate your portfolio recognition oh yeah okay um basically i had a family emergency last tuesday and needed to fly back to jakarta immediately uh but that was very intense and all of a sudden but these people i'd like to recognize bella marcel dila kashelin moana and mr jing actually for having my back and actually that reminds me of <laughs> have working in hospitality environment because that's not like really um strict and everyone was like pressuring yeah it, it, it feels if it's good i had been able to focus on my family and take care of myself too and get back here safely so thank you everyone okay uh let's go to the next core value masafis from Kak krishna krishna okay. Thank you, Rizky. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to both Kak Bayu and Kak Vidi. Uh, both of them has visionary idea, truly inspires me. Sometimes I get so focused on what's right in front of us and how we can make it better. But Kak Bayu and Kak Vidi always offer fresh perspective, open my eyes to possibilities that lie further ahead. So yeah, I'm so grateful for Kak Bayu and Kak Vidi and their visionary idea. Thank you. Okay, I guess you have uh, one more uh, corporate recognition, Krishna. Oh yeah, sure. I have for you actually. I wanted to appreciate Ricky for <laughs> his extensive knowledge about AI is truly impressive. Even though he's just fully promoted to lead the team, he's done fantastic job guiding team member, sharing his previous knowledges, and collaborating on strategic project like Tia as likable community manager. So yeah, thank you, Rifki, and hopefully you can be another moderator for another All Hands. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for the core value, Krishna. Okay, uh, so let's jump to Lutfi. Uh, Lutfi, are you there? Hello, yeah. hello. Uh, Can you hear me? Please elaborate your portfolio recognition. When I was working on an algorithm that handles <laughs> false overbookings automatically, I had to make frequent code changes to bigger. Now, because Kak Robin is the one responsible for the bigger code base, that means all the code that I push needs to be approved by Kak Robin. Whenever I needed to push my code, Kak Robin had to take the time away from his busy day to review and approve the code I was trying to push. He always had the patience to deal with my non-stop code changes and give me feedback to become a better coder. He gave, he gave plenty of feedback. And so yeah, that's why I nominated Kak Robin because of his patience and all the feedback he has given for me. Thank you, Lutfi. And uh, we all know that Robin has always been that way in their own product. So good uh, product ownership that that uh, Robin have, and then the next one is from KVD. Yeah, this is a uh, core value recognition for Lutfi. Uh, last month, uh, for core value fail fast. Uh, last month, Lutfi has received feedback on his productivity result uh, in engineering chapter. There were two main reasons: delayed seeking guidance and uh, from seniors, and also context uh, knowledge issue. After multiple correction and motivation, he's currently locked as the most productive engineer at the moment. 
and from this program progress for sure he will, he will achieve the minimum required points last month he did not achieve the requirement required minimum points so uh keep up the good work uh Luffy. yeah what a progress Luffy. uh you're having there a good job and then the next one is from me to Kak robin okay actually uh last week Kak robin has shared and taught the best practice that he has implemented in bigger and bbgo app to the ai engineers uh, in Olymp olympus uh, basically so that we have the knowledge to code better and solve issues issues efficiently so yeah thanks to Kak robin there okay the next one is from uh Kak Shailin again um, not actually again, but oh, not okay. again. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Jing, Rehan, and uh, Nadia to inspire the lead and to help others to help themselves. So uh, yes. thank you for spending your time and effort for the NTU Peak uh, program, especially to Jing and Rehan uh, for the uh, during the presentation day or even after the presentation. Like they still like hang around with the students as well as the uh, mentors to like do a little bit of some like networking. So yeah, thank you guys. The program is successful. Back to Rifki. Okay. Uh, nice one. Thank you for uploading. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the you, sir. Uh, okay. I'm going to recognize Kyla. Um, Kyla, for the longest time, I think, was uh, always uh, prioritizing her own health and personal life second after Book of Vista. And while that is, uh, you know, that's admirable but I don't think it's sustainable, okay? So I think it um, it's a positive transformation that uh, Kyla now is able to trust her team to handle some of the responsibilities of her absence and that she's able to also focus on her own health and her family's well-being, which I think is always, should always be your priority first anyway, right? I mean, this is just business, um, but uh, yourself and your family should always come first, okay? So anyways, uh, that is something I saw Kyla struggle with for a very long time, and I'm happy that she's been able to positively transform and, uh, and prioritize uh, correctly. Um, next, I'd like to recognize actually Rehan and Ghani. And this is, uh, this is actually mainly based on what I saw Rehan do at the NTU presentation. So, I often am a bit nervous when I see our team deal with people from outside the company because I wonder, are they going to step on toes? Are they going to show critical thinking? Will they remember the principles or will they just embarrass us and <laughs> say something that is completely off brand? But Raylon uh, did very well. He demonstrated very sharp critical thinking. He was able to um, essentially lead and show that uh, the students were correct on some things and not correct on other things. And it was very inspirational to see that transfer of wisdom to the uh, to the younger generation. And I think uh, part of that credit probably goes up to the leader as well, Ghani, whose camera's off. I'm not sure if Ghani's here or not, but Ghani, I think um, if your team is doing that, then they've been probably also in a culture where they're learning from each other and they're comfortable giving critical feedback. And I think that's uh, that's, you probably have something to do with that as well. Okay, anyways, uh, yeah, those are my two core value recs to uh, Ghani, Rehan, and to Kyle. Okay, thank you, sir, for the recognition. Uh, I think uh, for personal updates, uh, you can just add it asynchronously because we have limited time here. Uh, so let's jump to the announcement. Uh, Mas Hafiz. Okay, uh, there is no announcement uh, and feedback. So yeah, uh, let's conclude this all hands meeting. Uh, thank you guys for coming and see you around. Bye. Okay. All right. Thanks for hosting. Thanks for hosting, Ruski. Thanks for hosting. Uh, thank you. Have it. Yeah. <laughs> thank thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day, everyone.